Hello there, my fellow astronomers, astrologers, and windy wizards, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer Fantasy Lore. Previously, we talked about the Celestial Order and what they do, what their members are like, and, surprisingly, a lot of detail on their actual college. Today we will indulge in some more magic lore, by exploring the apprentices and several well-known magisters of this particular order. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? There is a rigorous program of examination for advancement within the Celestial College, beginning with an entrance examination to establish the academic capabilities of a new apprentice. Very few applicants with any aetheric talent are turned away, no matter how good or bad they do on the exam. The exam is really just for the magisters of the college to ascertain what level to start their apprentice's education at. The few that are turned away could be sent to the Order of Light with a letter of introduction, because their hierophants are always looking to take on new apprentices. An apprentice will be assigned to a master, whom they are expected to obey absolutely. Those that are based in Aldorf are assigned quarters in the college building itself, and they are expected to live there at all times. They cannot leave the college without permission. As well as their studies, apprentices are expected to aid their masters in their observations, which gives them plenty of chances to learn how to adjust the great telescopes in the domes. All the apprentices are expected to be neat, hard-working, and punctual. The tower domes are cleaned of bird droppings and other debris every evening by the college's apprentices. This unpleasant duty is handed out as a punishment to apprentices who are disrespectful, who perform poorly, or dress inappropriately. The regular need for cleaning ensures that someone is always nominated for the job. The masters of the college maintain that these duties instill an apprentice with a sense of humility. They believe that humility is important to all those wanting to study the winds of magic and not fall prey to the whispered promises of chaos. Once apprentices have become full magisters, they may take apprentices of their own and then pursue independent research. They are presented with a small telescope which they will carry with them almost at all times. Many astromancers choose to live in the college their entire life, leaving the building only when called to war. The main exception to this involves individuals traveling abroad to observe unusual astronomical phenomena. Maybe the most interesting story regarding a celestial magister of importance revolves around a certain Rafael Yulevno. Magister Yulevno is the present-day Patriarch of the Celestial Order of the Empire. He was born in Nuln, the son of an actress and a mercenary from Ostland. Yulevno never once saw his father growing up, nor for that matter did his mother. He was 12 years old when he started to have visions, flashes of things that would happen hours, days, or even weeks later. By the age of 15, the visions were coming so constantly in a blur that his mother believed he was mad. It was a testament to the boy's ability that in fact he was not mad. As far as his mother was concerned, Yulevno had been more than enough trouble for her in the last 15 years, and she believed that her acting career had failed because of him. Seeing a chance to start a new life without her nuisance son, she contacted the local workhouse and asked them to pick up the lunatic boy. But, via his visions, Yulevno saw that was about to happen, and he ran away from his mother and from Nuln altogether, living as a beggar in the small towns and villages around the city. Around that time, Yulevno began to have a new vision though, this one repeating itself time and time again. In this dream, both waking and sleeping, Yulevna saw a massive blue building with 16 glorious towers. At that point he did not understand the relevance, but it was calling to him nevertheless. And it was from the city of Altdorf that it was calling him. It was a rainy autumn day when Yulevno finally stumbled through the streets of Altdorf towards the great center. 
Although no one around him seemed to pay any attention, Yulevno couldn't take his eyes off the glittering blue building that reached so high above the city. It had the same towers he had seen in the dream. By the time he reached the college's great door, Yulevno could barely walk. So tired and malnourished he was from walking nearly non-stop from Nuln to Altdorf. As he reached the first step leading to the door, his legs finally buckled and he failed. But at that exact moment the door opened and a tall man with a plated white beard and brilliant blue eyes stepped out. Ah, there you are, he said. We've been expecting you. Enough to say that Yulevno was accepted into the Celestial Order afterwards. His great affinity for Azir, the Blue Wind, was exceptional. He saw the visions of the future in his mind without ever needing to gaze into the heavens or use any equipment whatsoever. The Magisters could not turn him away. Yulevno was a very quick study, and he rose to the position of Magister in a quick 13 years which was a very short time in the Order. And at 29, he was the youngest fully accepted astromancer in living memory. He would be 50 when he first caught a glance of Archaeon and the Chaos Invasion that he would lead against the Empire. And only a year afterwards he saw a vision of the death of the then Patriarch of the Order, an astromancer called Stern Glanzen. When he took his worry to the Patriarch, he found that the ancient astromancer already knew. The man had seen his death many times earlier, and he was ready to face it. Before he left for Middenheim, Glanzend told Yulevno that he was to be the new Patriarch. All the Magisters of the Order had foreseen it. Although he had never spoken about it, Yulevno had seen that as well, and could not refuse. Since that day, he wondered many times about how the Patriarchs of the Order were chosen. The Lord Magisters foresee who among their number will be, and then simply formalize it by electing that person. But if they had not seen him, Yulevno sometimes muses, would they have still elected him? Or, conversely, maybe they only elected him because they had seen him. And all of that made for a very interesting paradox. Was it a self-fulfilling prophecy? Which came first, the vision that decides the Patriarch, or the would-be Patriarch's own destiny that informs the vision? Was it fate or some other agency that decided who would become the Patriarch of the Astromancers each and every time? Another known Magister is Bartolomé Kereveld. Despite having a weak constitution for travel, Bartolomé Kereveld was brought on an expedition to Lustria, aiding the mercenary flotilla by navigation and even the slaying of the occasional sea monster with meteor showers. Although he claimed that anyone of the Celestial Order could do that. Along with a great mass of equipment, the Celestial Wizard brought with him a manservant called Theobald. The main reason for joining this expedition could be traced to an old logbook. The sole survivor of an earlier expedition had sold it to a merchant in Swamp Town, who then sold it to a captain, who in turn sold it to the Celestial Order. This book contained a map tracing the path by which the original expedition had went, making it a genuine find, or at least according to Kerenwald. It did not, however, detail what had happened to the men that had gone before. Dieter Klemperer is another master Celestial Wizard. He is famous for never being visibly surprised. Often, this is because of his magical insight, he is already expecting what would happen. But sometimes it's simply because he's very good at hiding his own reactions. He is prone to saying things like, well, of course, or naturally, when people tell him things, suggesting that he already knew them. He is also very tolerant of rudeness and general bad behavior. He wants adventurers to know that their behavior is inappropriate, but, as they are mere adventurers, he doesn't feel that they can be held to the same civilized standards. If they figure out exactly how patronizing he is, they may not employ his services. Dieter is in his late 60s. His hair and full beard are white, with the occasional flecks of grey, and he walks with a slight stoop. 
His blue robes are embroidered in silver with comets, moons, and stars. Klaus Zollmann is a celestial wizard and advisor to Baron von Bluten. His tower in Volganov is bedecked with an observatory and a shimmering dome that can disappear at his command. The telescope of the observatory could also be used to direct a beam of magic that can only be seen by his fellow magic users. Indeed, it reveals a mesmerizing glimpse of the winds of magic made visible, which is heady stuff to confuse any individual. So much so that any enemy wizard picked off by it becomes unable to move, shoot, or cast any spells. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the apprentices and some of the more well-known celestial magisters for today. Of course, you are bound to find more celestial magisters in Warhammer Fantasy novels, as there are quite a lot of those. Are you a fan of the Celestial College slash Order? Are they among your favorite factions of Imperial Magic? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do share any thoughts or questions on the matter, if you have any, in the comments below as usual. If you found the episode entertaining or informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and have an awesome and healthy day. May the blessings of Sigmar be upon you.